guys, welcome to Connect Church at Home. I'm Katie. I am so glad that you guys are here joining us for church. Question, if you had a bunch of building blocks, which would you like better? Building towers up tall or knocking them down, huh? Hmm? I mean, it's fun building things, but you get a little bit of satisfaction knocking them over, don't you? Well, whichever you like, when it comes to other people, God always asks us to build each other up. That's one way to be a peacemaker. And we've got a point about that. So let's say it together. Repeat after me. Don't stand down. Stand up for peace, love, and helping others. Great job. Now let's go to Connect to learn about worship. Guess what time it is? Do you know? It's time to connect to God together by singing and moving to music. Even though sometimes I may not feel like dancing or singing, it's not about how I feel. God deserves all of our worship all the time. He deserves our best. He deserves all of our thanks. So get up and let's connect to God together. This life is a journey, a path made for me. With every step I take As I run this race I'm becoming the person You call me to be A child of God A life redeemed So I set my eyes on you Jesus, I'm ready
Impact HQ2 opens today. That's right. Sean, Fiona, Noel, and the rest of the team that have been training here are now in their new building. <sighs> yeah. And they're not here. I mean, I'm happy for them. It's about time we got some breathing room. I mean, them too. I'm happy for them too. Of course. No more running into each other. No more yelling over other people to be heard. So peaceful. <sighs> I could stay like this forever. I don't know. At some point, someone might want to use the lounge again. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. Hi, I'm Jake, and this is the time we learned about peace and love and helping others. It's so nice to be able to spread my papers out without getting in anyone's way. This is a happy day. It really is. HQ seems much bigger than it did last week. What do you think, Jaden? Are you still enjoying the... Uh, are you okay? Yeah, I just got a lot on my mind. We just got a message from HQ2 from Fiona. And a second. This one's from Sean. And another from Noel. And they're all titled, Help? What's happening? It looks like a few problems sprung during the move to HQ2. Let's see if we can help them out. Why don't I take Fiona? Jake, you can take Sean. And Jaden, why don't you see what Noel needed help with? Do you really think I could help Sean? He's, you know, an adult. Of course. Don't stand down. Stand up for peace, love, and helping others. Don't stand down. Stand up for peace, love, and helping others. I can do that. Jaden, do you think you can do it too? Sure. No problem. Let's see what problem Sean has. All right. Connect HQ, I am so excited to be here at HQ2. I'm not so sure about everyone else, though. I came up with this great idea that I thought our team would love. Every morning, we'll gather together to recite the HQ2 anthem. It's this really great cheer that I came up with, but no one seems that excited about it. Here, let me say it for you. Connect HQ2, we are here to help you in everything you do. Come to us, day or night, we will always treat you right. Loving God every day, serving Jesus all the way. How long is this anthem? We'll be there if you are mad. All right, Fiona. Let's see what's going on at HQ2. Hi there, Connect HQ. I hope you're all doing well. I'm loving our new home at HQ2. But there are so many things for us to do. One of those things is to figure out how to keep track of all the postcards we received. Sean says we should put them in order by the date we received them. But I think we should organize them by topic. You know, all the prayer questions together, all the friend questions together. You get the idea. Sean and I can't seem to agree. Can you help? Easy peasy. Hi, Fiona. Thanks for reaching out. I have a simple fix for your filing question. Here at Connect HQ, we have a computer organization system that files all of our postcards for us in different categories, by topic, by date, and by who helped out. You and Sean can view postcards in whatever way you like best. I'll send over the instructions right now. Let me know if you have any questions. Fiona's always here to help you. Noel and Sean are on the job too. Whether problems big or small, we can help you face them all. Is it over? Sorry, needed to catch my breath there for a moment. All right, drop us a postcard in the mail or walk right in and send a spell. I hope Noel's problem is easier to solve than mine. Hi, Connect HQ. Noel here. I miss you guys. The new HQ2 is beautiful, 
but we seem to be having a lot of arguments as we figure out how best to do things around here. I've been a little down and a little confused. As followers of Jesus, I know God's given us peace. And like Tony told me, we can pass that peace on to others. Be peacemakers, right? But what should I be doing to be a peacemaker? Could you guys help me out? Thanks. What should I tell No? Hi, Kelsey. No, I'm sorry, I'm not going to your party. Well, did you invite Amanda? Well, that's why I'm not going. I told you if you didn't invite her that I wasn't gonna come. Look, I just have to talk to you about this later. Rainy days and sunny days to connect HQ2 is here for you. How's it going? Still listening to Sean's message. It sounds like he's having a disagreement with Fiona and Noel. He's not the only one. Fiona's message was about a disagreement as well. What's the problem over there? I think that because everything's just so new, they're a little overwhelmed trying to figure everything out. But they're all friends. Sometimes people need help figuring things out, even friends. That's why Jesus calls us to be peacemakers. Peacemakers? When we choose to follow Jesus, he heals our broken hearts and gives us peace. We're called to give that peace to others. I definitely wouldn't have peace if I had to recite this 20-minute anthem every morning. <laughs> Maybe you bring peace by gently telling Sean that. It's going to be hard to tell Sean that his anthem may be too long and has to be changed. I mean, he really loves it. Sometimes bringing peace is easy, and sometimes it's not. It definitely wasn't easy for Abigail in the Bible. Abigail? I don't think I've ever heard of her. Here, let me show you. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. Is alive. In the Bible, there was a rich man named Nabal who was known for being rude. <sighs> Nabal had a large flock of sheep and goats and a wife named Abigail. Unlike Nabal, Abigail was known for being sweet. Not far from where Nabal and Abigail lived, King David and his men were camping. David needed some supplies, so he gathered some of his men to send to Nabal's house. He told them to greet Nabal with kind words, and Nabal should return their kindness. So the men went to Nabal, greeted him with nice words, and asked him for some supplies. But Nabal was nasty. Go away! He shouted insults at them and told them to leave. The men returned to David and told him the things that Nabal had said. David was furious. He told his men to grab their swords so they could get even with Nabal. Meanwhile, back at Nabal's farm, Abigail heard how poorly Nabal treated David's men. She knew her husband's bad attitude could mean trouble for them. So she gathered food and supplies and loaded them up on donkeys. David and his men stormed through the desert, ready to get revenge on Nabal. Suddenly, they saw someone approaching. It was Abigail. Abigail bowed down to King David and begged him not to hurt Nabal. She asked David to stop and think before he acted out of his anger. David took a deep breath and thanked God for sending Abigail to calm him down. David accepted Abigail's gift of supplies and went home instead of doing something he might regret later on. Hooray! 
Because Abigail asked him to think about forgiveness, David chose peace instead of anger. Wow, Abigail basically prevented a war. Talk about a peacemaker. But it wasn't easy. Abigail didn't just sit back and let things run their course. She worked to right what was wrong and bring peace. I want to be a peacemaker, even if it's hard. I want others to have the peace Jesus has brought me. I'm ready to send my transmission to Sean. See if he'll trim a few dozen verses from his anthem. Kat, would you help me with it? I'd be happy to. Maybe we can look in the Bible and see what else it says about peacemaking, and then we can talk to Sean together. Jaden here. I'm sorry to hear that everyone's having such a rough time at HQ2. What you need to understand is, is, um, that, uh, arguing and... Hey, Jaden. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt your transmission. No, oh, you didn't. I didn't know what I was going to say. I've been having trouble thinking straight. Seems like you have a lot in your mind. You could say that. Do you want to talk about it? No, not really. Okay, but if you ever change your mind... It's just that Kelsey and I have been best friends. We've known each other since we were babies, and we always used to have the best time together. That was until Amanda came along. Is Amanda another one of Kelsey's friends? No, Amanda is the new girl at school, and I like her a lot, but Kelsey doesn't like her at all. In fact, Kelsey continues to dislike her for some really unfair reasons, and she's so mean to her. And even though they do have a few things that are different, I keep telling Kelsey that they have so much that's in common, and she just won't hear it no matter what I say. <sighs> that's terrible. Yeah. And now Kelsey is having this big party for the class, and she's invited everybody except Amanda. And I have been encouraging Kelsey to be nicer to her and invite her to the party, but no matter what I do, she just won't hear it. And I just need some, some, some... Peace? Exactly! From me and my friends. But nothing I tried has seemed to work. Being a peacemaker can be hard work. I just learned some things the Bible says about peace. I really like what it says in the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 19. Do you want to say it with me? Sure. It goes like this. Romans 14, 19. Romans 14, 19. So let us do all we can to live in peace. So let us do all we can to live in peace. And let us work hard to build up one another. And let us work hard to build up one another. Even though being a peacemaker is hard, it's always worth it. It's worth building each other up instead of letting things tear us down. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Jake. You know, after I make my transmission, I'm gonna try giving Kelsey another call. There's still some more peacemaker work I can do. Hi, Connect HQ2. I want to encourage you. Remember that peace that Jesus gave you when you became his followers? Well, he made us to use that same peace and put it into our relationships. He made us to be peacemakers. The Bible says it like this, Romans 14, 19. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Being a peacemaker can be hard work sometimes, but it's worth it. And that was the case for Abigail. When Nabal was unkind, Abigail stepped in as a peacemaker. She provided supplies for David and his men. She asked for forgiveness. She treated David with kindness and brought peace. I was ready to give up and believe that things would never work out between my friends Kelsey and Amanda. But Jake helped me realize that I needed to keep being a peacemaker. Peacemakers don't stand down. Stand up for peace, love, and helping others. Show kindness to those that are having a hard time. Give to those that are in need. Show joy, empathy, and friendship to those who are hurting. We won't always agree on everything, and we don't have to, but we can still give each other peace. And remember, from one HQ to another, Connect HQ is here to help you. Kat, is it okay if I leave a little bit early today? Is something wrong? No, it's actually a good thing. You see, I'm meeting Amanda and Kelsey for lunch, so we can try and work through some things. Good job, Jane. Way to be a peacemaker. Bye. 
I hope we were able to bring peace to everyone at HQ2 today. We might find out right now. We just got a message from Sean, Fiona, and Noel. Thanks for all your help today, Connect HQ. Kat, those instructions you sent over worked like a charm. And Jake, I've cut the last 27 verses from the HQ2 anthem. I think it's gonna work a lot better now. But... But if it doesn't, I'm willing to let it go if that's what's best for the team. Mostly. Jaden, we want to thank you for reminding us to be peacemakers. Being a peacemaker isn't always easy, but we can learn to live in peace with each other. And we can give that peace to anyone who comes in to connect HQ2. Speaking of which, we better sign off. It sounds like our first walk-in is here. Time for us to share the peace of Jesus with others. Bye. Take care, Connect HQ. Thanks again. It's so quiet in here, so peaceful. So quiet you could even hear a pin drop, as my mom used to say. Mm, then I'd have to pick it up off the floor. <laughs> Whoops. Today, we learned about being peacemakers. And the best way to share God's peace is by having His peace within yourself. When you decide to follow Jesus, He heals you and gives you His peace. If you'd like to follow Jesus and have this peace, all you have to remember are your ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you decided to follow Jesus, be sure to talk to a parent or a leader you trust. Did you make that decision to follow Jesus today? If you did, I am so excited for you. Be sure to talk about it with a trusted adult today. Okay, we're gonna do our verse together. Romans 14, 19. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Great job. That's a good Bible verse to remember when you're trying to be a peacemaker. Okay, got a game that you can play with your family to help you remember that. Here's what you do. Someone in your family says the first word in the Bible verse, and then the next person says the next word. Then the next person says the next word and so on and so on. You get what I'm saying? Okay, if someone says the wrong word or forgets, you gotta start all over, okay? All right, so press pause to play the game with your family and I'll be waiting for you. Did your family master that challenge? It probably got kind of crazy for a little bit, didn't it? <laughs> I don't know how hard it was for you, but it was pretty tricky for me to do that. And it reminded me of being a peacemaker. It's not always easy to build people up and stand up for what's right and share peace. But the good news is that God is always there to help us. One great way that God helps us to be peacemakers is by speaking to us through his words in the Bible. There's a Bible plan that's all about peace and peacemaking that you can do together as a family, and it's called Peace for Kids. So look for it in the YouVersion Bible app. Okay, we've got some great discussion questions for your family, so stay tuned for the cues, and I will see you guys later.